Hello! So this evening we're looking at the latest local legend to be released by a Sobo for Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this case it's developed by Inibuilds, it's the Mitsubishi MU2. So let's have a look around it. We're on the ground here at Toyama in Japan, so I thought it only appropriate that we go to Japan to do a test flight with it. And just look at the quality of modelling of this thing, it's incredible. I mean, we always say this, don't we, that the aircraft are getting better and better, but this is really very, very impressive. Given that it's all compound curves everywhere as well, how on earth they have got this many polygons into it and kept it smooth is anyone's guess. It really is something else. Let's have a look down at some of the structures that maybe are out of sight that you wouldn't normally see. And yeah, the structures everywhere are very, very good. So yeah, this is the MU2. And we'll go and jump inside in a moment and show you around the inside. It's got tip tanks. They're very simple to operate. Let's go down in detail, see how much attention to detail they've given this. And the answer is an incredible amount of attention to detail. It's a bit crazy, really. Anyway. Let's go and have a look around inside while we've got the drone camera because it's the easiest way to look around. So internally, this is the, the cargo variant that we're looking at. There is a passenger variant as well that obviously has lots of seats. So the, um, the payload inside reacts to the, your, your weight settings in the, the aircraft. The cockpit modelling is just as good as we've become accustomed to in the simulator. It's pretty ridiculous, actually. Actually, we've just found a bug, haven't we? Look at that. Interesting. I wonder if that still appears when we're not in the drone camera. I think that's a, a unique problem of the drone camera, by the look of it. Because I hadn't noticed that before. Yeah, there's another one there, look. It's behaving strangely under certain circumstances. Anyway, so let's come out of drone camera. Yeah, as soon as we're back in the normal view, it doesn't do that. So there's a couple of small bugs for them to iron out that we've discovered while I'm recording, which is interesting. Let's get this fired up, shall we, and take it for a flight. So we need to... I'm going to pull the plug on the Xbox controller because it's a pain. It tends to drift on the sticks and then stops me controlling the aircraft. Anyway, so let's have a look around at what we've got inside the aeroplane. You can see it's all modelled wonderfully. It looks real. So you've got a very rudimentary autopilot. I haven't used it yet, so we may have a play with this. It's got this capture and track mode. So tracking and capture are two separate functions when you're tracking a, a VOR beacon, for example. Uh, we can pop the yokes off in the normal way. It does have a, a little EFB here on a mobile phone. So you can go into the map on here and you can go into settings as well which allows you to configure the cockpit. So at the moment I've got the, what's called the classic cockpit, which gives you this fully functional weather radar. So this is all, you know, can be played with to do things. Um, we're not going to play with it too much. Obviously the weather's lovely today, so we don't have to worry about that. But if we didn't want the classic cockpit, we get a Garmin in the middle of the cockpit and a modern transponder. So I don't think we'll use that because I think it's much more fun to have um, the old old controls. So we have to actually do some work for a change. We can switch this over to the passenger variant and then obviously if we spin around and look behind us you see a wonderfully modelled passenger cabin. We'll go back to the cargo variant. And you've got some um, shortcuts there to get you to take off config but we're going to look through that ourselves anyway. So how do we get this thing started up? So there's a key down at the bottom left and we can turn that to the on setting. Now it's certain elements of this have been dumbed down. There are switches that are already in the correct places already. 
but otherwise it's fairly straightforward to get it up and running. So we've got the throttle controls mapped, I've got the, the yoke mapped, I've got the pedals mapped. We need to have the, um, the condition levers on taxi. So how do we get this thing started? So for each engine you press the, in, oh sorry, you come across, you flick the, the gear lever down to ground for each engine, then you do start fuel enrich, then you crank the engine and then start. If you look over here you will see the oil pressure build up on the engine, so this is the left engine at the moment. And when that gets to 40%, we can introduce fuel with the main tank over here. So we're just waiting for it, there it goes. So if we do f fuel on the main tank, the engine will fire up, there we go. So we'll sit and wait and watch the animation of the propeller whizzing around. It always scares me to death seeing the propeller this close. So I do think the sounds let this down a little bit, but it may be that the real thing sounds like this. Who, how do we know? And then, so we've got the left engine running, so we'll put the generator on there, and you can see the amperage has climbed up there. So we do the same trick again. So fuel switch goes to ground. So the gear switch goes to ground. The fuel enrich button, then crank, then start. And again, we're watching the oil PSI climbing on the right engine now. While we're waiting for that, we can go and calibrate the altimeter. I'll just press B to do that. Press D to calibrate the compass if it's drifted at all. It hasn't, got a look of it. So we're just coming up past 40, so we can turn on the fuel. We should see the propeller start spinning. There it goes. Of course, I haven't been doing any lights, there's nobody stood near us anyway, but you can see um, the lighting controls are overhead. So we've got beacon, which is on taxi by default. No, remember I said that some of the things are by default on the correct setting. So we might want to go and put the nav lights on. Uh, we've got the anti-ice over here, so we've got the pitot heat left and right. Okay, let's look back down in the cockpit. So engine is running, so we can then go and put the generator on for the right engine. And that's about it really for the basics of getting it ready for flight. From then on, you're just dealing with the, um, the propeller condition and the throttles. So, shall we taxi out? Let's have a look at the map and see where we are. So I'm using little nav map today. We're at Toyama. There's a, a VOR right next to us, so we can tune into that and have a play with it once we're in the air. So wind is from the south, so it's only three knots, so it's it's gusting to five. So I guess it does make sense. We should taxi out left and then go up the taxiway. So we'll come off the parking brake, and you can see we're rolling immediately, but only gently. Enough that turning the nose wheel is stopping it from going anywhere. He says as we clutter, oh, we should we should clear that. Let's put the head tracking on. Yeah, we'll clear our wing over the top. That's one of the advantages of a high wing aeroplane, I guess. Obviously, if you are rolling too fast, I'm just going to put the toe brakes on there for a second. You can pull the propellers back a bit. So although it says taxi, let's just... It's a bit fiddly. So just slowing the propellers down a bit. It does seem a little bit out of place with it taxiing so fast. Okay, so we'll go down to the taxiway, which is over here. We don't need a lot of runway. We can get the flaps down while we're on our way, ready for takeoff. Rotate speed's quite high. You're looking at about 115 knots, I think. Um, we're just looking... Yeah, it's a bit of fiddly airfield, this one, to get to the taxiway. It's not overly obvious where it is. 
not flown out of here before. So this is Toyama. So let's have a look at the mount side. Yeah, like I said, it's remarkably quiet, but that might be accurate. The real airplane, airplane could be remarkably quiet. But I know a Sobo do tend to have quite strict rules for, I guess, for some sort of classification of the software. that It can't be overly loud. There are strict decibel limits to the, um, the volume of the engines for anything that a Sobo puts out. So I'm going to go to the next level of flaps. So, something I have noticed about this aircraft, let's just slow down a bit, we're taxiing at a hell of a speed. If we wiggle the ailerons, let's just slow right down, you will see that they work a bit like a Tomcat, in that they push the, the wing down. So the back of the wing is all flap. Okay, let's come out here. We've got plenty of room from here to take off. I'm just going to jump inside. So just before we go onto the runway, let's go and have a look at those lights overhead. So we put the, the pitot heat on earlier. We've got the nav lights on. Let's go and do strobes now. Beacon light can go to on instead of taxi. roll out to the runway. It's a huge runway, we don't need all of this runway. It's stuttering a little bit as it's loading assets in, but we'll take no notice. Okay. So something else I've noticed is the, um, the crank switches go to run all on their own. So we're going to put the propeller condition levers all the way forwards. And then push the throttles all the way forwards. And let's see what the acceleration's like. So we've got knots over here. So 115-ish, so we begin to rotate. It doesn't really want to lift the nose at all, look. It's coming up at 140. So I think that might be a bit of an issue with the aeroplane, I'm, I'm not sure. So gear up. It's a beautiful part of the world, isn't it? So this is Toyama. There's like a flat plain here, the sea is behind us. And there's hills surrounding us on all sides. So it'd be a great place to go for some exploratory flights to try air aircraft out. So I haven't trimmed this, it's just climbing out quite happily at that altitude. Let's remove the flaps. So that drops the nose, so it's quite pitch sensitive in terms of lift. So let's pull the... You can see these have got a cruise setting, which we'll go back to. Whoops. They're quite sensitive. Okay, let's have a look at it from outside, shall we? It's a beautiful little aeroplane, isn't it? So you can see the, the various lights retract. So let's have a look at that one there. So the light we're seeing there is the landing and taxi lights. So we can retract those. And if we go and look outside, we'll see them coming into the airframe. Very good. Just going to check the volume levels to make sure I'm not blowing your eardrums out. Yeah. So the Asobo aircraft all tend to be quite quiet, so I'm not going to get too worried about that. Okay, so while we're just turning here and climbing, let's have a look at the nav radios then. So we've got a nav beacon here. We can see we're about to come back over the top of the airfield. So 11085. So we got nav one up here. I'm going to turn the head tracking off for a moment to do this. 11085. 
you can see the HSI has reacted to that obviously we're right over the top of it so there's no point doing too much with that yet what we could do is set it to the runway direction we want to land which will be 202 degrees so if we go and look at our course here and set this to 202 degrees we know the direction of the runway before we come back So that's the runway relative to us, so if we were to... It, the roll rate is impressive, and it rolls on its axis. I guess that's a function of the, the design of the fuselage. Let's go to back to head tracking so we can look around. So I told you the ocean was behind us, here it is. So let's trim the aeroplane. It trims very nicely. I have noticed they've done the usual trick with animated nose bosses, which is a bit of a pet hate of mine in Flight Simulator, but it's not too pronounced. Interestingly, if you don't have enough speed, the elevators don't have an awful lot of influence unless you give it a lot of elevator, so they're very soft around the centre of their travel. us. We should see the airfield back there in a moment. Famous last words, of course. Let's have a look at the map. Where have we gone? Ah, it's alongside us. So if we look out left, see it's just the other side of the river is the airfield it's quite a long runway isn't it you can see the beacon flashing over there on the, the tower so while we're flying off towards the hills over here let's have a play with the autopilot shall we so over here we've got a heading bug so we can't center it we can only roll it so I'm going to take the the head tracking off so we can concentrate on doing this so we wanted that on 202 didn't we heading bug will spin around to the direction we're going now does shift make it go faster no it, oh, a little bit so the heading bug is now going the same direction as us so down here we can turn on the autopilot so it's engaged it's probably doing pitch and roll hold but then we can go heading so it pushes that button in and it's doing heading hold. We can also go for... It's a job to see it with normal controls. So altitude hold as well. So let's watch the vertical speed there. Yep, yeah, that's holding that nicely. So if we wanted to spin the heading around or actually no, let's try some altitude changes first. So there is no obvious vertical speed mode on it. So I presume we just go up and then let go. And has that influenced the climb rate at all? Maybe we have to switch off altitude hold first. Yeah, that's exactly how you do it. So this is me finding out while I'm showing you. So we can climb at whatever rate we like. And the aircraft's quite powerful, so we're chudling along here 190 knots quite easily. The throttle's at about 80%. And the propellers are still going quite fast. It's quite funny, when you talk about turboprops, people often say the propeller condition, you can kind of use like a volume knob. Let's turn it right back and see what happens. So you can see the RPM here, we're almost out of the green. Hasn't made a lot of difference in sound. It's fascinating, isn't it? 
seeing how different aeroplane re aeroplanes react to different conditions. Okay, so does the... Okay, so I thought I had the button mapped to disengage autopilot. It would appear I have to go and turn it off or hit the engage button down here. Is that correct? I can't actually get to the switch. I have to go and switch it off. Okay. So I've turned the throttle down a bit. Let's be a little bit careful about this. Let's put these back to cruise. back on. This part of the world's beautiful, isn't it? Get some speed back on. So we're right on the top end of the RPM for the propellers at the moment, but we're still just in the green. Looking at the torque, where's the... Yeah, we're right on the li limit of the torque as well, actually. So when we were at 80%, we were at a good level inside it. I mean, I'm not sure it really simulates failures as such, but it's good to behave in a good way with the aeroplane, isn't it? So you can see visibility is great, actually, for this kind of aeroplane. I can't get over just how good all of these compound curves are. They really have done a good job. You can't see many polygons anywhere. So lots of things are clickable as well. So you can click on the um, the shades. I've not tried doors or anything yet. I'm presuming they will work where they should. We'll try that when we land. Okay, let's fly back to the airfield then. You can see it's directly in front of us. We're going to go around it and come in the other side, so let's drop the, the revs a little and start descending. So remember we've got the VOR beacon tuned to the airfield. So as we drift off to one side of the airfield you can see the airfield's to our left and that's exactly true. Let's put the yoke back on so you can see my inputs. Can you see what I mean about it's quite soft around the middle of the the elevator input, but the ailerons are very responsive for this class of aircraft anyway. Okay, so we're going to come in the other end of the runway. Let's go back to 80% on the throttle. 80% on the stick, which is pushing us out to about yeah 85% on the the torque. So obviously, if you were flying this a lot, you could configure your controls to to have the detents or whatever you've got appearing in the right kind of places for normal flight patterns. I'm really impressed with this. It's a great little aeroplane. So judging it by, we had to come in at about 100, and, oh sorry, we rotated at about 150, didn't we? I obviously didn't have enough flaps. So we'll come in obviously with full flaps and we'll hold it off the runway. We've got a nice long runway, so we'll find out what we can get away with. So we're flying the reciprocal at the moment. But this plane is un under £10, so it's probably, what, $10 is it in the, the US flight sim marketplace? It's very, very good. Okay, so the airfield is now behind us. So this is Toyama. Look at those mountains over there, they're impressive, aren't they?
okay, let's start slowing down as well. So what's that doing with the torque pressure? We come back to 50% on the sticks. Bearing in mind we've also got reversers, or oh, we can you know, reverse the pitch. This has beta, this aircraft. So oh, it's dropping like a stone look with the less thrust over the wing. Like I said, it's quite pitch sensitive in terms of power. So as soon as you start pulling the power away, the nose tends to sink. So turning it back in. Get the gear down. That's the runway. Now do we get a glide slope? It doesn't look like we do, which is interesting. Oh, well, that's the VOR though, isn't it? This doesn't have ILS, I don't think, at this runway. Let's just double check that. Oh, it does. So 109.3. So let's do, do that quickly while we're on our way. Welcome to me being terrible at head tracking. So, do we get the, the glide slope? We've got... I didn't check, actually. I'm, I'm going far too fast now. So, we are going to go around. We've got um, Vassy lights. Oh, sorry, Papi lights here. That serves me right, and this is an abject lesson of how not to do an approach. Don't start playing with the aeroplane as you're approaching the airfield. So we've got time now to go and have a look. So no, it doesn't have a, um, it only has a localizer, it doesn't have a glide slope, which is fine. It's got puppy lights. Okay. So let's have a look at this configured for landing. So we've got the flaps out slightly, we've got the gear down. The runway over there. Next stage of flaps, which should help us keep the nose up on approach. So uh, speed is falling off. That's the wrong way. Looking for the papi lights for some vertical guidance. Coming off the throttle. Full flaps. Remembering that it was about 115 to 120 knots for rotation, so we should be good to come in at about 115 knots. Slightly off to the right, but it's not enough to even register on the HSI. Sit up a little bit. So we're uh, showing up as a little bit high on the pappies. So let's drop until we get two whites and two reds. So we know we can do that just by pulling the throttle back. So we've got one red, two reds. So let's moderate nose pitch now and throttle to hold the speed just above 100. We don't want to stall. I don't know what the stall speed is, so I'm being quite careful here. I've got quite a lot of elevator left. hoping it's not going to suddenly drop the nose like an anvil. A little bit high. Cool, it is a heavy plane, isn't it? So let's go to beta on the engines. 
and they're not oh the other speed is coming off so if we include the wheel brakes as well in that something I didn't try on that approach which we could have a look at is spoilers does it have spoilers so let's no it doesn't so I just wondered there for a moment I thought oh I wonder <laughs> I wonder if those ailerons might throw themselves into the air to become spoilers but obviously you'd lose roll control if you did that so that's why it doesn't I imagine okay let's go and taxi in so as we come in let's slow right down these come back to taxi and again we saw earlier we can turn the propellers down a lot more than that and in terms of lights we want the strobes back off nav light oops strobes off beacon back to taxi I'm having a real job today not very good at multitasking yeah I'm not going to push my luck I'm going to wait until we go and tank and we, I've still got the landing lights on that's all I'm thinking about Actually, no, I didn't extend them, did I? No, so we're good. It does accelerate worryingly while taxiing. I think you have to pull the propellers back a lot. I'm not helping myself by being terrible at multitasking today. Okay, so parking brake on. So there is a emergency stop function on the end of the propeller travel. Now, what does that do? So then we can put this to the gearbox can go. It's already on safe. That's all fine. This can go to stop, I imagine, on the. That's weird, isn't it? Look, it puts itself all the way forwards again. Presumably, if we go and turn the fuel off, then that'll just kill the engines anyway. Oh, look, and they're feathering themselves. Very cool. So, yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag, isn't it? It looks wonderful. And everything that's there works. But there's a lot that seems to be done for you and a lot that seems to be automated, which is kind of interesting. Let's go and turn off the electrics and put some of these switches back in their off positions. I don't think it remembers where switches are, to be honest. So it's not a major concern. It's just if you're wanting to do things properly, then obviously you can follow the checklists if you want to. We were going to have a look, weren't we, at the doors so does that door work yes it does very cool is the clipping on the yeah the clippings on the fuselage so you can't walk through the doors by moving yourself around okay what was that sound <laughs> okay that's something else in the airfield that's doing that so it's interesting as well that is the door the pilots use they don't have a door at their end of the aircraft. But anyway, this was the Mitsubishi MU2 in Microsoft Flight Simulator flying out of Toyama. So if we go and have a look at that. That is a great place in the world to fly. And yeah, it's the latest local legend. I really like it. It's in, in line with many of the other local legends. It's dumbed down to a certain extent. But what's there is usable and good quality. And I think that makes a major difference quite often in Flight Simulator. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It's very good value from the marketplace. So do go and have a look at it. Okay, I'll see you again soon.